What's up guys, ViperFPD here, and today what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do a teardown of the DJI FPV air unit. And this is pretty much what you get in the box. You actually get some cables, you do get two antennas, and then of course the air unit itself with the camera. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom in, and we're going to go ahead and tear this thing apart and show you guys exactly what's inside. And we're doing, we're tearing the entire thing apart, taking everything apart. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so the first thing we go ahead and need is we're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter hex driver. We got one right here. And we gotta take off this bolt, these two here, and then this one right back here. This one back here has some like glue or something in it. Um, I can just kind of get my driver in there, so it's fine. But let's go ahead and take this bottom part off. Now this bottom part off, you would actually need a service that you did damage your camera. You will need to have, this is the part you would service. So. That's why they have easily accessible right here, where it's just part of the cover comes off. Because you'll see right here, it'll um, show the ribbon cable for the camera. And there's instructions on the DJ website on how to replace it. So right here we have the ribbon cable. And what you do is you just pop this off. Pop it, you have to kind of get in the middle here and just lift it. And there it is. And then this whole thing should just go ahead and pop out like so. So we have that part out. So the camera is disconnected. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take the bottom screw out. I mean the top one I guess you can call it. And then we have this one in the back. All right. And then we can go ahead and be very careful when you do this. There's a ribbon cable inside there, you see? So you have to kind of grab it and fold it back because you need to remove these two screws on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now you need a Phillips head screwdriver. Remove these two screws. This is pretty much the retainer for the ribbon cable. And just try not to put too much pressure on that ribbon cable when you're doing it. Because it is fragile. This is That's probably the worst part, is this part right here. Um, of damaging something, especially this expensive. Okay. So we pop off the little connector. I'm going to put that to the side so I know where the screws went. And then this part right here, just like the other cable, I'm just going to pop it up. So, and then the two halves come apart. So this side's not really too interesting. We have these two screws right here holding it. This one screw here holding it to the actual top. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Let me take that screw and put it to the side. It's the uh, other screw. And we're just gonna remove this one. So right now we have like some thermal paste, as you can see. And uh, this probably just get better contact with the top plate on the heatsink. So that's that. So that's pretty much all taken out. Um, let's go ahead and take this bottom off as well. And there is two screws holding it right by the connector. One, two. We're going to go ahead and remove those. We do have the ribbon cable here as well. We could probably remove that. We can just pop that off just like we did the other side. And this is kind of nice. It's all removable, so just in case you do damage ribbon cable, maybe you can just get a new ribbon cable from DGI. All right, so let's go ahead and pop this out here. Let's just push it in from that side there. And then it should pop right out with the goo. So there's the goo. That's pretty much what it looks like inside. So it has one real big heat sink on the back to transfer heat. And then we have, uh, kind of reminds me of like a socket that has indented so it can fit some stuff in there. And then this side is also another heat sink. It's pretty much really it in it. Not really much. 
Um, so you guys are probably curious. Because I was really curious too. Like, why can't we just go ahead and stack these on top? Because look how much less weight that would be. You know? Like, see that? If you had them stacked on top of each other, or however they're supposed to be. Kind of like, actually like this. That is comparable to a stack for a racing quad, right? But, unfortunately, they made them a different size. So they're not 30 by 30. As you can tell. It's kind of... It's off. It's off keter. You can probably get... You can get two screws in on one side, or then the other two, you won't be able to get them in. So, that's that. But I'll be kind of interested to see if try, someone tries to put this in a stack without the case. And let's go ahead and do a weight on these things. Let's see uh, what everything weighs. All right, so we got our scale zeroed out. So six grams on that part with the antenna where the MMCX connectors are. Eight grams, nine grams, ten grams, I guess, on no, nine grams on this part here which I guess is the main controller where the USB-C is. And then we, uh, together, you know, four, 15 grams, it says. And then also we have, you know, the case itself. So how much does the case weigh? 13 grams. So that's 13 grams. You know, every little difference makes in a quadcopter. Plus this part too, which is probably a like gram maybe. That doesn't even show up. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's go ahead and do some... Uh, Got my handy dandy calipers out. Zero this out real quick. So if you guys are looking for dimensions of this thing, I know people are. People like to make maybe custom frames on it. So this is the part where the um, USB-C is. So we're looking at a 33.05 wide. And then Lengthwise, let me get this off the, off the connector. Looks like 36, 37. So that's that. And then the piece, the, the actually, actually pretty thin. Let's see. Uh, 4.72 millimeters. So. And let's see at the top. This is where the MMCX connectors plug into. Now, as widest part, it's it's six point three zero millimeters. And then wide looks like we are thirty three point one four, just like the other one. And I'm assuming this is gonna be exactly the same as well. Uh, thirty six. So yeah, pretty much. Depends, I guess, where you grab it on this side. And the camera weighs uh, 12 grams, so you guys know. Let's go ahead and uh, take this apart. So we need uh, 1.5 millimeter here. And we're just going to take the back case off. We're not going to go ahead and uh, mess up the lens, because I don't really want to readjust the lens. So I won't mind doing this. Lots of little wires in there coming from that harness. Let's go ahead and get a closer look. Oh, there's a ribbon cable. So do not pull it when you take it out. See the ribbon cable right there? But yeah, it's just a PCB sandwiched in between two plates, just kind of like the air unit. Um, the sensor's right there. It's kind of interesting how they have this, though. It's like two pieces. They have like the ribbon cable go into the sensor, which is separate. Which like they can probably modulate this and take put different cameras in it, which are, that's kind of cool actually. Let's see if anybody actually does anything with that. Well, DJI since they own it's proprietary. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the everything in a nutshell. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do tons of FPV related content. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'll be doing tons of DJI videos. I've already released a few, 
and I do, do reviews on quadcopters as long along with tutorials on everything FPV related. So go ahead and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a like if you found this video helpful. I definitely enjoyed taking this thing apart. Um, now I have to put it all back together, but hopefully I remember where everything went. Um, but I'll see you guys in a future video. See you later. Peace.